Hello and welcome to my channel. My name is Scarlett and I am an atheist and skeptic in progress. I like to contemplate matters of life and philosophy, especially what gives us meaning and purpose. This week in the United States, we are celebrating Thanksgiving, a time of year to overeat, overindulge, and say what we're thankful for this year. I thought I would do something a little less snarky than usual, there'll still be maybe some snark, and tell you my deconversion story, as it were. So gather round, ye atheists, and listen to my tale of why I became an atheist. I'm from Louisville, Kentucky, famous for the Kentucky Derby, the Louisville Slugger, and the Falls of the Ohio State Park, the largest exposed Devonian fossil bed, where you can walk on trilobites, brachiopods, corals, and a lot more. I don't live in Louisville now, but I have visited plenty since my childhood, and I still have family and friends there. I was raised in a Catholic family, went to Catholic school, and attended Mass on Sunday or Saturday evening. I have lots of good memories from my time in those schools. There were great teachers, and some mediocre teachers. There was nothing strange or off-putting. I never heard about any of the scandals plugging the Catholic Church. As far as I knew, no boys were abused, but I could be mistaken. In any case, I only learned of the scandals after I was done with the church. As a small child, I felt observed by a pantheon of lesser deities. All the saints, the Virgin Mary too, family members that had passed away. Jesus might have been included too. He was usually busy doing other stuff in my child mind. Uh, my father had died in the Vietnam War, so he was up there too in some corner watching over me. Sometimes I would turn around really quickly to see if I could see one of them looking out over me. And of course I never did see anything. The corners were always just corners, nothing else. My grandmother taught me, if you lose something, pray to St. Anthony. He will help you find it. I figured that must be one busy ghost. I have good memories from Our Lady of Lourdes grade school, fish fries, playing on the playground with friends, being in sports and clubs. There were a few nuns as teachers, and most were nice. My second grade teacher was very strict and hit us with a ruler, palm up for minor offenses, knuckle up for major ones. But I wasn't targeted specifically, we all had to take our turns, and besides that, corporal punishment was kind of the norm at that time. There was a nun that we thought was kind of crazy. Sister Carmelita, who I had for 7th and 8th grade, she had the bloodiest poster of Jesus hanging on the wall. Jesus on the cross, just covered in blood like a slasher movie from the 80s. And she would weep over how he had suffered on the cross. And if we were cutting up or goofing off like kids do, she would tell us off and have us look at that poster. And I don't know, we just lost it. We thought that was the most hysterical thing. Most of the time, church was kind of boring and tedious, but I do have some good memories. Uh, going to midnight mass on Christmas Eve and listening to the choir sing, waving a palm frond on Palm Sunday. I really enjoyed the masses where they had the holy water and they would throw it all over the crowd and that was really good, or incense. Then there was a cathedral in Louisville that took to doing some Latin masses, so that was there for the novelty. And then I also have some fun memories of this little church in the West End that had barely any parishioners, just a few old ladies and the young priest. My cousin and I would crack each other up. And we would have to take up the gifts to the altar. My grandfather got really upset at us and eventually refused to take us to church. He would sit out in the car while we were inside. We would still crack each other up, and the little old ladies just thought we were adorable. I also enjoyed reading for the Mass. Sometimes I was called up and I would do one of the readings, and I thought that was really cool too. I completed all the childhood sacraments. I was baptized. Not my choice, obviously, but it still happened. I had my first communion, my first penance. I have great memories of being in line for confession with the other 10-year-olds wondering what to confess. We made up sins to tell. I mean, it's not like we thought we were perfect. We knew we weren't angels. It's just we were busy being kids, so I didn't exactly keep a tally of what I had done wrong. But I would go in and said I lied to my mother or I was disrespectful. Things like that. They were true in a diffuse sense. I, I mean, I probably would have done things like that. So Then I would get up, go say my rosary, facing the Virgin Mary and baby Jesus statue with my friends. I did hesitate about going through the final sacrament of confirmation, which happens about the age of 13. If you don't know about this, this is supposedly the time that the Holy Spirit de descends on people and you're supposed to commit yourself to the church. But I was already having doubts and starting to think of myself as an agnostic. In the end, 
I decided to do it more as a social ritual to be with my friends. The main sticking point for me was the unfairness of life and why God allowed it. Why were some people born into the right religion while others weren't? Why were some people born into great wealth and others into poverty? How could God condemn people who had never heard of him to a lake of fire for eternity? And when I got older, why were some people tempted by the evils of same-sex attraction while others would be able to marry and spend their lives with the person they love? And all the talk of God's mysterious ways or sin entering the world just didn't sit right with me, not with a God who is supposed to love us and want to spend eternity with us. So at this time, though, I'm not exactly sure what I believed. I was not a skeptic. I still believed in some kind of deity, but I thought that maybe the rules just weren't that important. So as long as you had a religion of some sort, that's all that really mattered. You know, I could talk about how I believed in ghosts and cosmic energy. And one time we went to a friend's mother's place of work that what they were sure was haunted. And we had exorcists come in. It was very fascinating and really weird stuff happened, but I can't explain that now. Just weird stuff, dishes clattering, typing going on. It's crazy. I could also talk about the time I ordered a free full horoscope, but I felt like there were demonic forces in it, so... I threw it away. Ha, <laughs> memories. So a few things about high school. I went to an all girls school. I overall got a good education. Uh, we did learn evolution. Uh, I had Bible classes, which is unusual for Catholics. We read the Old Testament, the New Testament. We had an ethics class where we debated issues like birth control, sex outside of marriage, abortion. Um, several of my teachers in high school were not quite nuns. They had decided not to take their final vows to become nuns, and they would tell us the official position of the church. But I think overall they were very realistic, and they knew that girls were going to get up to some sexy times with some local boys or what have you. So one of the times in our ethics class, they actually brought in birth control, passed around condoms, IUDs, and the like, all the while telling us the church doesn't approve, but we're going to have an ethical discussion about this. And then one of my fun memories is they brought a woman in to talk about the rhythm method. She was in her 40s and pregnant with child number nine. Whoa. She was very enthusiastic about having children and thought that the rhythm method was the best way to go. But that taught me all I needed to know about the rhythm method. About God throughout childhood and into high school, I was taught not to expect him to answer directly. God was busy, you see a kind of CEO of some giant bureaucracy that ran the universe or whatever. And Jesus was God, so ditto. He was off making gravity work or something. I don't know. And the Holy Spirit was busy inspiring people. But don't expect answers. So we were taught to pray to Mary and whatever saint people preferred. You see, they had God's ear. They were intercessors. Um, they seemed to work as some kind of filter to make sure only the choice messages got to God. In any case, when I learned about people's personal relationship to Jesus, it was an eyebrow raiser. A Jesus that lives in your brain and listens to your requests over coffee? That's just really far removed from anything I learned about. And at least the Catholic one makes sense, because does Jesus really ever answer prayers? I don't know. And this is only one of the oddities of the Christian God, how different worshipers come to very different and mutually exclusive conclusions about God. This all had me very perplexed. Why did some people purport to have a relationship and get advice about the most banal topics, while others had to deal with a supernatural lackey? God works in mysterious ways, indeed. I was also taught that the Bible is a collection of books, not to take it literally. This is very much in line with St. Augustine. Some knowledge is hidden in the Bible, so it's allegory. Some is history, some is poetry, and so on. So I never had a problem learning science because the Bible was supposed to be an imperfect instrument, inspired by God, but put together by imperfect man. Now, I didn't take the time to ponder that a perfect God would be happy having this dog's breakfast of a document to represent him. That came later. Morality. Well, everyone I knew drank, so that wasn't off limits. In high school, lots of people tried drugs. Sleeping around was common. I lost my virginity to another good Catholic boy. All this notion of people leaving religion to sin just cracks me up because in both high school and college, I saw Christians of every stripe doing all kinds of stuff that is supposed to be a sin. 
I had gay friends, and this never posed a problem to me. They weren't disowned by their families or anything. I think initially their parents were concerned, but it was something they accepted. A few of those gay friends stayed religious inexplicably. A few left the church. The reasons were more complex, and they just wanted to have same-sex relationships. I don't want to speak for them because I don't know the entirety of their stories, but I can understand that if you feel your identity is considered a sin, you might not feel welcome in certain places, and that your belief can start to fall away when no God comes around to call you back to the fold. So by the time I got to college, I was full-on agnostic, and I was a deist for a while. I don't know when exactly I started to feel that that belief was silly. I mean, why deify the universe? Why imagine energy as something more than it is? The world and the universe were plenty interesting. Why add this mystical layer? It would be another couple of decades before Tim Minchin wrote Storm, but when I heard it, I recognized the feeling I had for a long time. If you don't know Tim Minchin or Storm in particular, I'll link it in the description. And since it's Thanksgiving here in the U.S., I'll link his Thank You God as well. You are welcome. So, back to my story. During my 20s, I lived in several European countries, France, Germany, and Italy. I went to grad school. I got a PhD in French literature and an MA in Italian literature and became a college professor. During my life abroad and in grad school, I met people from every part of the political spectrum. Communists, socialists, reactionaries, middle-of-the-road conservatives, anarchists, people with no political opinions. I even met a few monarchists in France and Italy. That was something. In terms of religion, I met all kinds of Protestants, more Catholics of various stripes, Jehovah's Witnesses. I even dated one. Oh boy, that was a relationship, man. Muslims, Sikhs. I didn't even know what a Sikh was growing up. Buddhists. One born-again Christian told me about how she had regained her virginity after repurifying herself. I didn't know it worked that way, man. And that's just the so-called school of life. In the real school, graduate school, I had to take courses in every period of literature. I also had to read history, philosophy, various social science work to understand what was happening at various points in history. I began life as a medievalist. <laughs> I ended up as a modernist. What is interesting to me was the way religion was portrayed by the various writers, and it became clear to me that there has always existed a variety of thinking on religion. And it was clear that men and women who became priests, nuns, or monks often did so because their family forced them to. It was a way to make sure they had food to eat and that kind of thing. Oh, and there was a campus preacher that showed up from time to time. I would listen to his rantings about everyone being damned. Sometimes students engaged him, more for the laughs. No one took him seriously. All right, so enough of this boring background. When did I decide I was an atheist? I went about my life for the longest time without any kind of label. I just did my thing, you know. But it was the late 2000s. I saw a post on Facebook. Remember when we all loved Facebook? It was from someone I went to high school with that I hadn't had any contact with. She was outraged about a situation in, I think, Pennsylvania, where atheists were ruining it for everyone. This was early Facebook, but it was clear what a dumpster fire that site could become even then. Intrigued, I clicked on the post. I wish I could find this piece, but it is part of the internet that has been lost to time. Anyway, the gist of the story was, in some small town, the local Christians put up a manger scene every year at their little memorial to the people who died in wars. The atheists wanted to put up their own solstice marker at the same time and had filed a request to do so. Instead of granting the request, the town council voted that no one could put up any religious symbol at the site. Christians were very upset, saying that the atheists were ruining it for everyone, the exact thing my friend was saying. It was perplexing to me. Couldn't everyone see that atheists had never had anything to have ruined? That the town council could have simply approved their solstice marker? Facebook style, my friend and I had a conversation about the story, and she had to grudgingly admit my point, but it was clear she still felt the atheists should have stayed in their place. That little exchange brought my atheist identity out. Now, my husband is also an atheist, and he came to it earlier than me, and didn't really use the label much of the time either. His story is much different from mine, and I won't tell it here. But I also went online to look for community. I found a little blog called About.com, where a lively group of atheists chatted in a forum. 
I read Austin Klein's blog regularly there and had exchanges with Tracy H., who I later learned was Tracy Harris from The Atheist Experience. I think I discovered the atheist community of Austin from that blog, maybe even from Tracy's posts, but I don't remember. I really enjoyed listening to the discussions on this show, and it helped me articulate some of what I had already been feeling up to that time. I also discovered Hemant Mehta's Friendly Atheist, Right Wing Watch, and a blog I continued to read called Roll to Disbelief, written by Captain Cassidy, an ex-Pentecostal and Catholic and fellow Gen Xer. Over all these years, there have been opportunities for any god to call me back. I've been in churches for weddings and funerals, and except for the emotions brought up by the human condition of two people committing themselves to each other, or a person leaving this mortal coil, I've never felt anything religious or spiritual. The Catholic Mass seems strange and foreign to me, very unlike the way I felt as a child. My husband has composed music for church services, and we attended them to watch the premiere performance. If anything, I find Protestant services more bizarre than Catholic ones. The music is nice. The preacher had a nice sermon on interpreting the psalm my husband had set, but I didn't feel anything spiritual. In terms of friends today, my main friend group is primarily atheist, several Jewish people, a few ex-Protestants, one person raised Quaker. I still maintain friendships with people I grew up with. One friend is now Southern Baptist, several state Catholic, one even became a Franciscan friar. My family is still Catholic and send their kids to Catholic school. They know I'm not religious. Some people steer clear of politics and religion. I also had to do this with my mother but others share my political leanings. None of them are science deniers or young earth creationists. They are also accepting of LGBTQ identities. In general, I would like to just go about my life and not think about this slice of my identity, my atheism. I believe in religious freedom and think people have the right to believe whatever they want. I think my friends' religious convictions stem more from emotion than a hard examination of their beliefs. That's their right. I value our friendship too much to try to dissuade them from their beliefs. If they want to chat about it, I'm here for it, but we have too many other things to talk about and do. What I don't like seeing is the enmeshment of politics and religion. That if you are pro-abortion, it's because you want to see babies murdered in the womb, or whatever that is. Or that being gay or trans is a sin. You can believe that. You can cite your religion as your basis for that. But I don't want our laws based on some people's interpretation of their holy book. And I guess I'm puzzled too by people's inability to understand the difference between your private worship and government promotion of your preferred flavor of Christianity. So that's where we are today. I have been an atheist officially for about close to 15 years, and before then unofficially for another 10, and before then I was vaguely deist. At any time some deity could have inspired me, but they didn't. Arguments believers provide don't convince me. Threats of eternal damnation sure don't, because I don't believe in hell. I don't believe in any spirits or fairies or demons or possessed objects. Now, if you want to talk about how we're living in a simulation, I might get on board with that. JK. The last thing I'll say is that I don't see my life being much different than people I know who are religious. Everyone has their struggles and hardships. I don't see them living any differently than I do. They just think God has a hand in it. So there you go. The gradual sloughing off of belief with no intervention to keep me in the faith that I detect. I hope I don't need to say that there is so much more to my life than this one thread that I've narrated here. Well, thank you for listening to my jumbled story of deconversion. I know it wasn't dramatic or startling, but I think it was worth telling because of that. If you liked it, you can YouTube like it and all that. Share in the comments below something that caused you to lose your faith or convince you not to believe. Do all the YouTube stuff. As always, I've been Scarlet, giving my life meaning and purpose by making this video. Enjoy your holidays and see you next time.